Hey, it's Montel Williams, and welcome to another special edition of Let's Be Blunt with Montel, where we talk anything and everything cannabis, and we try to be as blunt as we possibly can and give you as much information as you can so you can make the right choices in a marketplace that right now is kind of filled with products that you have no idea where they come from, how they're manufactured, or even whether or not this is something you should choose to do yourself. So I am so excited today because on our episode today, we have the one and only the one and only, Mr. Reggie Noble, who you know as Redman. Redman, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> all the cheers, all the cheers, man. This is yes. so good. So you and I, you and I have really been circling around each other now for two and a half years, almost three years in yes. the Canada space. We've attended multiple events together. Um, why don't you give all of our listeners just a little bit of a you know, maybe a history lesson on your experiences with cannabis in your life. Okay, well, uh, I first started smoking cannabis when I was 13 years old, and I was turned on to it from my uncles uh, in Alabama, my Uncle Al and my Uncle Will. And uh, we was uh, hunting, and I was hunting. I used to go hunting with them when I was young, and they let me hit a joint while we was hunting. And after I hit that joint, I mean, my hunting days were over. I, it was like a new experience to me in my life that, that I had to, to uh, gain more knowledge about, even at the age of 13. I wanted to continue. That was my first introduction. Now, when I first came out with my first album, my first music was in, like, 92. Um like dudes like me, Snoop, uh, Be Real from Cypress Hill, Method Man, we we are considered the forefathers of the marijuana rap industry because we've been uh, promoting and uh, also celebrating uh, this plant since our first album, and uh, you know, and and I I've, I've just been exploiting it ever since then because. People have to understand, like uh, when you're when you're talking about a platform like marijuana through your music, especially in the early '90s. Uh, you know, in the early '90s, marijuana was still considered a drug, which is which oh, it still is right now, a Schedule One drug, and we need we need to get it off that. We need to get it off that list as in the Schedule One. But uh, we we've been promoting it since like our early '90s, where it was looked as looked heavily as a gateway drug, and I want people to really realize that we 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 not only put our our life on the line for it, meaning our you know far as make far as far as far as us making money and getting endorsements. Like we we have companies that would not uh, want to you know be in business with us because of what we talked about on our album. And did any of us compromise our what we talked about? Did any of us compromise? who we are, what we smoke for business and for money. No, we did it. Um, we stuck to our guns. We said, okay, if you can't accept me for who I am, smoking marijuana in the early 90s, then we can't do business. And uh, and ever since then, man, I just I just gained more knowledge, gained more knowledge, and, and I, I attended Oaksterdam University in Oakland because I wanted to find out, you know, uh, more about marijuana, more about the strains. I wanted to learn about what I've been smoking since the 90s. I got my degree. I, I, I'm a licensed patient consultant. I shook hands with Richard Lee, all the guys that's on the front line for the marijuana movement and legal, legalization of it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not really considered an activist like Big Unk over here, Monty. I'm not considered an activist like you. But I have been putting in work and researching and learning about what I've been smoking for all these years. And now I want to be behind the responsibility of medicating the right way. And you know, what's really interesting is a lot of people don't know that there are people like you who literally laid the groundwork where the rubber meets the road in making America understand that this was something that, number one, has been used for eons, you know, for thousands of years. But number two, it's something that is not the gateway drug and not the, the deleterious, you know, societal you know, monster that most people have made it out to be. You know, let me ask you some question. Man. Now, do you think, that when, you, when you think back on it, man, you take a look, you think back in the 90s when you guys were out, 
you know, talking about this, and everybody was telling you, do you have to talk about weed? Do you have to put that in there, man? Can't you talk about something else? And now all of a sudden, you know, this has become like the green rush, the gold rush. Right. What you, exactly. What's your views on that? Well, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I, even back then, I didn't know that this marijuana industry would, would grow to this level of legalization. Of, of of it helping kids with far C B D strands. Like we didn't know. Like far as me snooping us, we didn't know that. We didn't even know it'd be ever legalized, you know, just from thinking how the 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 picture that was painted about marijuana back in the nineties. Um like the like the picture that was painted back in the nineties about marijuana was just as equal to cocaine. Like, it, it was, you know, it's Schedule 1. Like, if you might as well, if you got caught with, like, an ounce of weed in the 90s, you might as well got, got caught with a gram of cocaine. Same kind of right. same kind of temperature. So uh, now that I look at it from the 90s into now, and and those people that that used to down it or didn't believe in it and, and, and said, well, it's a gateway drug, I don't see those people no more. I, I don't see those people no more. I know, hold on, I don't mean to stop you. I have never seen a big wild turkey in my life. And there's a wild turkey right in front of me right now that's crazy, humongous. <laughs> but um, I never thought it would grow to this kind of platform. And I'm sure that people that followed me in the 90s, that grew with me in the 90s, didn't know it would grow to this level either. So I'm I'm just proud to be a part of a movement that that is, that has turned around from not just as a gateway drug to actually helping kids with disorders and helping, uh, you know, patients with disorders and stomach disorders and HIV and, you know, any kind of disorder you may have, I think marijuana can, can help you instead of buying over-the-counter drugs. So I'm, I'm just glad to be a part of the, the new green rush, the new movement, you know. I'm just part, glad to be a part of it. Yeah, you know, I, I I sometimes, you know, get really, really angry over, you know, I'll sit in a panel discussion, or I'll sit in a forum where, you know, there's doctors who are sitting on a stage that five years ago would vilify cannabis, and now they act like they're supporters. And they're only supporters because they know that there might be an opportunity for them to make some money, where five course. years ago, they knew they couldn't. You know, now right. you've gone ahead just like me, and I make sure I'm make sure it's 100 percent open to the public. And they have to know that you know I have my own brand and have uh, been the formulator for my own brand now for over four years uh, in the marketplace. But you have your own brand, and you dis- dis- deliberately chose not to hang your hat on top of someone else's formulations, but to come up with your own brand. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Okay, um, the name of the brand that I, I have started is called Jane Train. I'm working with my boy Chang. Uh, Chang, uh, he's uh, he's the he's one of the guys that founded Rock the Bells concert. Uh, anybody that went to Rock the Bells concert knows about this concert. It's a very big festival with you know a lot of artists that come together, and he put it together. And he's good at that market. Um, his name is Chang, and he has high hopes. Um, and Blind Tiger, and I joined up with him with my my brand Jane Train. It's called Jane Train, J A N T R A I N. And uh, to joining up with him with the kind of platform he has and the kind of platform I have, uh, not not only has we have we been friends the last ten years, ten to plus, no, maybe like fifteen to twenty years, um, but he has a platform where he's a great marketing guy. And we want to bring something to the marijuana game to bring more communication uh, to our peers about marijuana, learning about it, and and actually getting involved. Um, The thing with me and meth, especially, we never, uh, you never seen a red and meth vape pen or a red and meth grow or red and meth anything far as the marijuana game because, you know, we we didn't want to, I say we didn't want to endorse any other anybody else brand we didn't want to be that one name sign off and then after we're done with the contract they go do whatever they want with our name and that product that we're not uh that we're not uh i I say have clearance to make sure that product is good under our clearance you know once the contract is up 
that's it. So we didn't want that. That's why you never seen our name exploited any uh, any marijuana products. And now that we, I have learned more, and also I want to be a hundred percent compliant. Like I, I'm not taking uh, underground deals. I'm not uh, trying to uh, take the short way out with my brand and trying to make a quick dollar because it's not about a dollar with me. Uh, I make good money doing music, doing tours. I'm actually in the game of helping people. I want to, ha I want to use my brand to help people in the in the in the same sense as in the same sense as uh, being recreational. Um, like if if I can if I can have festivals on my own, if I could do events on my own where patients can come through and get free CBD or free bud to help them along with their disorders, that's my pleasure. That's the goal that I'm reaching for. Um, the money comes from the love that you put in the game. That's with anything. And that's my goal with my brand, Jane Train. Um, I want to be able to just really help people and bring more communication uh, from my point of view to this game. I want to add something to this game. I, I, I treat it like the music game, Monty. Like, you know, we all, like, you you know, what you did for TV and talk shows, you brought a certain crutchema to talk shows that made you stand out. And I did that with music. And I want to do this with the marijuana game as well. I don't want to just be another uh, a brand that's owned by artists and saying he has a brand because I actually think and know that uh, artists today and even talk show hosts and, and um, um, TV personalities, it's all commercial now. Like I hear, I hear TV personalities just saying, hey, I'm going to start me a dispensary and I'm going to start selling drugs. And I'm like, what the hell is they talking about? Like, that right. it, it's got that commercial where you can just say, I'm, I'm going to start selling drugs. I'm going to get me a dispensary. I'm going to start selling weed. And none of these people succeed. None of these people succeed going into it with that kind of attitude and without any research. So uh, I just no, I hear that. I, I'm with you 100% because a lot of people don't understand. And this is something that I've been talking about for now as an advocate and literally been on the streets for like the last 20 years, just helping to, you know, get legislation passed and helping to ensure that, Patients have safe access to the most efficacious medication they can get. And what a lot of people I don't think understand is that, you know, what we call recreational use or adult use, there are people who distinctly make a choice to use cannabis instead of drinking, maybe, or instead of doing something else. And they're doing so because even if they don't know what their medical issue or underlying issue is, they have one. And that issue is right. recognized is solved by this plan. So I'm glad you, you, you really have taken the stand and are, you know, promoting this. Now, you're a father, right? Absolutely. Father of five. Father of five. I'm father of four. And, you know, okay. you know how, do you, how do you talk to, you know, one of the things, Red, that I've, I've literally, man, been wrestling with, and especially over the course of the last year and a half, you know, we in the last four or five years in the United States have been cultivating and mutating this plant yet again, because this is what we did for about 20 years from the 50s through the 70s, trying our best to grow a plant that has the highest THC content in it that we possibly can, and not really recognizing or understanding the difference that may be making in the entire genetic profile and makeup of the plant. When, you know, THC is, is, a, is a good thing, and, you know, we have vilified it in the last 10 years, and everybody keeps talking about, oh, you can get marijuana that doesn't have a psychological effect. But what they don't understand is that all the cannabinoids, all of them, THC, CBD, CBG, all of them work together. So you need to have them all, but we don't need to mutate this plant as far as we've been mutating it. So, so what do you think about when you, when you first off, well, I will start off with your kids, but you know, when you talk to your kids about it, are they, do they, do they consume? Uh, well, you know what? One of two of my sons do, two of my sons do, they might smoke here and there. Uh, my son, Najee and Artie, they, uh, they are my oldest one. He might smoke here and there, not a heavy smoker. And my, my other son, Najee, he consumes, 
but not that much. He just graduated college. So, you know, they have a good balance. They definitely have a good balance. That's good. And then, you know, for, for parents, people listening and tuning in right now, you know, they're, they're, I've, I've run into people who said to me, you know, I, it's hard for me to talk to my kids about this because, you know, on one hand, I want them to not consume as much alcohol, but on the other hand, I don't know what it is they're getting when they're smoking this stuff. So how do I explain this to them, Montel? And I normally oh, say, yeah. you know, the one thing is, is, is knowledge. Knowledge is key. So you need to understand what is happening and what we've been doing to change the plant chemically and understand that just because the number of, uh, that, that represents the amount of THC and it might be high doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to create a higher high. Exactly. Exactly. The, well, I tell you what, I've been smoking so long that my kids, they know that as uh, far as my youngest kids, because I have, uh, you know, I, I range, my kids range from 14 to 28. So I have a good range of, you know, of, of ages that I can explain to the right way in which they're, you know, they're feed off each other. Um, my youngest kids know I've been smoking for a while and they ask me, dad, what is that you smoking? And I tell them about it. I, it's, we've moved to a time and a place in, in, in our era where we have to explain these things from, to our kids now. Um, like someone asked me that question maybe like last week. And I said, you know what? It's no different from explaining to your kids now about, you know, uh, the gay community, as I would say, because it's no longer, it's no longer like a hitting thing to not talk about. I mean, and I say that in the, in the, in the, and I say that as far as, you know, putting it side by side, because, you know, now marijuana is a new green rush. It helps kids. It, 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 it helps kids and it helps people, not just for recreational. And we have to talk about it because it's, it's in the forefront of people seeing it. Just like being gay is. I noticed like, you know, cartoons are talking about gay, gayness. And, I, and, and, and you know, schools are talking about it. It's in the forefront now. So you would have to talk to your kids about, you know, that side of being gay and not. You have to explain it to them if they ask you about it. And my kids are the same way. I explain to them everything that I know and that I go through and that I see and they see and explain it at a temperature that they understand it and not saying, don't do this, don't do that, you shouldn't do this. I explain to my kids at a temperature like, look, you have a choice when you get older. You can try this just like with my kids that smoke now. I let them know, listen, you can smoke marijuana, but don't get yourself caught up to a point you don't know what you're smoking and it wears you down. You're, you're not being uh, effective with your, your everyday life. And they get the picture. So now they, my, my older sons, they know how to turn it off and turn it on. They're not just a smoker every day where it's making them lazy or they don't, they don't know what to do with their life because they're smoking. I teach them to use it in a positive way. They see how I smoke and keep motivated. They see how I smoke and keep inspired. And they like that part about marijuana. And I teach them, I say, well, I'm smoking sativa. Cause sativa gives you energy. Sativa, sativa gives you, keeps you motivated, gets you inspired. And that's what I smoke. And then when I teach them that way, they got a better understanding of me just saying, you know what? Don't smoke this because it'll make you this. Try this. It'll make you motivated. So it's the way you explain to your kids nowadays, I would just say. In long, yeah. in long. I mean, the key is educating yourself. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, uh, you, you don't put a cereal, you don't buy a breakfast cereal and put it in your mouth unless you know what in the, the breakfast cereal that you're eating. So you should exactly. know what's in the product that you're using. What do you think yes. about the the opportunities now? You know, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion about this, and I think the discussions are just beginning, and they need to continue even more, especially throughout this next presidential campaign and whoever is the president next. But, you know, we now know, if we look back historically, that, you know, we've created a industry in the penal system 
that has been fueled by the arrest of people of color when it comes to cannabis. You know, I think if you take a look back over since the dawn of, of prohibition of, of marijuana, 80% of those arrested for this drug in this country had been people of color, whether they be African American or Hispanic. And African Americans yeah. make up the yeah. largest percentage. And yeah, I was one of them. I was one of them. Well, well now, yeah. but when we look at the industry right now, that is the green rush. The green rush isn't really as colorful as we think it should be. As a matter of fact, the green rush is more almost lily white in the country. I mean, with the amount of representation of minorities. What do you think about that? Um. We paid the price and went to jail to turn it around, and now the doors are being slammed in our faces when exactly we try to start our own businesses. Well, you know, I, you know what I could say for that is is because I'm not very political. I'm gonna just be honest, but I was one of those guys that got locked up a lot for bud. Um, so speaking from my end and and getting in the game now the right way, the correct way, I can say that we, at, us as a people, us as black people, we have to knowledge ourselves. We have to research more. We have to start a business that's being compliant and moving the correct way. We can't take, we can't look for the quick money and thinking we're going to win because it's more harder for us just being 100, just keeping it 100. The way that we can beat and when, far as not being taken off the map and not, and not having these resources, because that's all it is. They don't want us to have the resources for us to, to use this to win as any other culture would. So we have to research. We have to get, gain knowledge. We have, to, uh, we have to be communicative with other cultural, uh, with other cultural uh, brands that's trying to do the same thing and stand up as a unit. Because one by one, trying to do it separately, that's how they get it. That's how they can um, eliminate you, one by one. But if we start communicating with each other, building with each other, um, and, and gaining more knowledge, you know, that's the whole key to everything is gaining knowledge what, of what you're doing and starting a brand that's moving the correct way. I mean, because I look at it as like this. Uh, any corporation, these corporations are coming, and they're coming strong and heavy. And and their main and their whole job is to wipe out whoever's not compliant, whoever whoever's just getting money under the table. They're gonna wipe all these guys out. That's their goal. And if we're not careful, we could get caught up in something that that we don't even have that we don't even participate in. Because we're trying to be compliant, we're trying to do the right thing, but just because as a unit, the way everyone moving, trying to get money under the table, they're going to wipe us out. So as for people that's been, that have been locked up and trying to do something now the right way, I would say gain more knowledge. Get your resources together. Make sure that you have the proper representation that solidifies you in this game as a as a as a good brand and you're respected as a good brand far as your product far as your the way you move far as your business partners far as everything because you don't want any you don't want anything that they can say that can take you from doing what you have to do and just in short terms that's what i think gaining knowledge being communicative and building with your culture as well Absolutely. Let's take let's take one more second, and I got one more question for you. Let's take a second to talk about the differences of delivery systems that are out here these days. Do you do you like to dab? Do you like leaf? Do you like oils? Do you like concentrates? Do you like edible? What's your favorite form or favorite delivery system for cannabis? Um, I'm a flower guy still to this day. That oil that you let me taste of your oil, um, is bomb. Like I like the oil you, you let me taste of yours is fabulous, but that, all day for people I'm a flower guy. That, that's for people to understand that uh, what you tasted was my brand that's under Montel, and I think I gave you the ninety five five, which is a ninety five percent THC, and it is a hybrid THC with um, a 
uh, 5% CBD on top. Uh, so, yeah, but you're, you're a Leaf guy, so you, you'd rather roll one up. Yes, I'd rather roll one up. I'm not going to lie. I'd rather roll one up. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, do you, do you dabble in edit, edibles or do you dabble in dabs? Woo, I cannot uh, stand. I cannot do edibles. I cannot really? do edibles. My system just won't agree with edibles. And dabbing, I tried it a couple of times, but I'm not a, I'm not a dabber. I'm not a dabber. Gotcha. I'm not gotcha. A dabber. I, I find it can be, you know, over over time, it, it, to me, you know, I, I will dab occasionally. Um, as a matter of fact, I had multiple units that I, I purchased when I first got involved in dabbing a little bit. I thought it was the bomb. But then, you know, after time, I started to realize that, you know, the intensity of that is just really unnecessary. Um, you know, it does, there's no value to me sitting in a corner drooling for a little while. I'd rather be exactly. able to experience the plant right away. Now, for edibles, though, depending on the situation, like for me, if I can get a low-dose edible that just gives you a, you know, controlled, moderate, you know, buzz over a period of time, I, I, can, I can like that, especially if, you know, I'm on a, on a vacation somewhere. If I can take a small edible in the morning and, you know, that, that, that'll that ride for about three or four hours, I kind of like that. Hey, my friend, I don't want to let you go without giving you an opportunity to just promote whatever it is you're up to. Do you have an up Are you on tour now? you have any movies yeah. coming out? What are you doing? Oh, wow. Well, um, movies, as far as acting, everyone knows I don't really like to act. I'm in a uh, sense of try- wanting to direct and write scripts, so that's my that's my goal. I want to be behind the camera. Uh, I did a crash course at NYFA uh, last summer. So big up to NYFA. I want to uh, learn to direct and uh, write some scripts. As um, far as album, I'm working on an album called Muddy Waters 2 that's dropping this year. That's an anticipated album everyone's been waiting on. So, yes, it's coming. I have samples and stuff I have to – I'm funding my whole my own album. So it takes a little time, y'all. So sorry for the wait. Um, also, uh, I wanted to mention uh, that I'm also like uh, – business partners with uh my boy damon johnson damon johnson uh have started ken ken um kenamark usa i think i talked to you about this before and right. i want to just fill, fill any uh fill everyone in fill in fill everyone in sorry about this product um this is the first uh fda approved 100 percent natural warning label that goes on an infused product so uh it's for edibles so say if you're at a party and the edibles don't have no wrapping on it, but if it's sponsored by Canamark USA, it's a 100% warning label, 100% all-natural warning label that goes on the candy. And if you have a phone, you can actually, that you have a phone with our app on it, you can actually hold the phone over that candy or edible, and that the app will tell you everything about that edible, where it came from, how many grams it takes to get medicated, what what kind of weed that's in it, um, what company made the uh, edible. It'll give you the whole rundown on that edible, and we're doing this for the safety of kids and safety of people medicating the right way. Because like you and I, we don't want, you know, this, this, this beautiful plant to get a bad rep from people saying, oh, well, I shot my so-and-so because I was medicated or I was on an edible. We don't want that. And I'm, I, I want to grow to... I want to grow my brand to be behind the responsibility of medicating the right way for people. So this brand is called Canamark USA, Damon Johnson, and also Lakeisha, Dr. Lakeisha Jenkins is, is part of it. Uh, people might know her or heard of her. She's very well educated and researched about uh, this marijuana game. Her name is Dr. Lakeisha Jenkins, and uh, we're all business partners on this product, and it's the first FDA-approved. Uh, all natural warning label that goes on the infused candy. Check us out. It's called Ken Mark USA. I really wish you. I really wish you well with that, my friend. Because I think that should go on every edible product across the country, anywhere across the country. They should have it so that a person, before they put something in their mouth, and again, so people understand what you're saying is that you have a edible label, and that edible label would then be attached to the edible cannabis infused product so that before you stuck it in your mouth you could literally read it flash it in front of your app and then your app your 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 cell phone would 
give you all the information about what that particular product has in it. And if it doesn't have the Canamark, then don't eat it. Exactly. And because the whole thing of it, when that wrapper comes off an edible, you don't know where that edible came from. And plus, you can eat it, and it's all natural. So check us out. We're 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 moving fast, and we you know we we're just doing great things with it. Um, and I think that's about it, man. As far as my work, everyone knows my work ethic is still here. Me and Red, Red and Meth are dropping uh, new music probably next year. We're working on our own movie, um, and just great things are happening, man. Like, I'm proud by, I'm, hey, plus Jane Train, like, going to these events, like, the hall, the, uh, what's that, the Hall of Flowers I went to out in the Bay, that was so great. That's where we launched our product at, and shouts to the Hall of Flowers out there, and for having us, man, it was a great feeling. With, uh, Gary V was out there. He was one of the uh, uh, sponsors for that event, and it was just a great movement out there in the Bay Area. I had a great time out there promoting the product and giving a soft launch to Jane Train. So look out for Jane Train and uh, High Hopes. And big shouts out to Mark Glover. Mark Glover is doing big things over at High Times. I teamed up with him a long time ago. I think that's where we met through as well as yep. we re- reunited through uh, Mark Glover. Um, yep, yep, yep. Mark is absolutely. doing big things. He's at High Times. And uh, I've been really in contact with him quite a bit. And yeah, I definitely, definitely have to give him a shout out for helping to hook us the two of us up. And man, I can't wait to see you out on the road again. I'm telling you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And you know, I can't wait to connect with you again because we have a lot to talk about. Unk. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Redman here, right here on Let's Be Blunt with Montel. Reggie Noble, he told you he's got a brand new album going to drop this year, but he's also working to make sure that he's as blunt as he can be when it comes to the cannabis industry and making sure you get the best information you could possibly have. Thanks so much for joining us today on this edition of Let's Be Blunt, and make sure you have a wonderful day, and check your buzz. That's right. (laughs) Check your buzz. Let's be blunt.